Hi, this is Al Edland. Recently on the Microsoft Visio forums, there's been a number of questions related to how to read the XML content of a Visio VXD uh, file, which is where uh, Visio stores uh, its drawings as an XML uh, uh, drawing. Uh, one of the suggestions is to use link to XML, which is a language uh, integrated queries. There's a number of reasons why we might consider doing this. Number one is ease of process. Link to XML is very easy to use and gives us the ability to both read and write data back into the uh, drawing. Uh, another reason for doing a uh, application like this or a sample like this is there are new features in Visio 2007 and uh, 2010 uh, which could be taken advantage of with an application like this specifically data integration and access to BPMN uh, data which is in V2010 Premium Edition. Finally, uh, writing an application like this would give us the ability to access a drawing without having uh, Visio installed on the system where we're executing it. So we're going to look at three drawings. We're going to look at an org chart drawing uh, we will look at a drawing that has external data imported as data record sets, and we're going to look at a BPMN drawing. Each of these drawings, as they come into us, uh, will be put into a form uh, that has three tabs. The three tabs uh, will give us a tree view of the, of the drawing will give us the XML text of the drawing. And finally, we've uh, included a Visio ActiveX drawing control to give us the ability just to see what the drawing is supposed to look like. So right now it's spending the time drawing the tree. And we're done doing the import. Looking at our drawing, we can see that uh, our objects have shape data associated with them in the form of data graphics, which tells us this drawing is a V2007 professional or higher. If we come over to the tree XML and expand our tree, we get a list of the elements that are in the document for the document portion of the drawing. Uh, document properties, document settings, uh, style sheets, uh, masters, and the masters are where, of course, we store the document stencil, uh, pages, windows, uh, an event list, which we will talk about in a moment. Uh, this project has VBA data in it as VBA project data. It also has Solution XML. Solution XML in this scenario is where Microsoft is storing the data graphics. Finally, at the bottom of the list, we have uh, two elements with a namespace of VX, which is Visio 2007. This is where by, uh, Microsoft is storing uh, the pointers and the data that it got uh, externally. If we come up to the Documents section and look at Doc Info, You'll see that what I've done for doc info is I've taken the document properties and stored uh, the, the title, subject, creator. Uh, if the document was created with a stencil, that's put up here as well. Some timestamps are captured in the document section, and these are the events that we uh, said we would talk to. These are the persistent events that were loaded into this document by the org chart wizard so that the next time this drawing is opened, uh, the org chart wizard can regain control of it. Let's, con let's continue with the, uh, the document. The next section we want to look at is pages, and pages has two forms associated with it. One is shapes, one is connections. When we open the shapes and look at our, our second page, what we'll do is we'll populate the list view control with the shapes and the subshapes that are on this page. On the right-hand side of the page uh, or uh, of the form, what I've done is I've listed some of the sections of the shape sheet. And as we move through the uh, shapes on the page, 
you'll see that different ones, different command buttons become highlighted. This is because not all of the sections in the shape sheet are put into XML format. What's put in there is what's changed. If we select custom properties, uh, we'll come up with the shape data or custom properties section of the shape sheet. And you should recognize all of the columns here as having been in the normal shape sheet display that you get when you're in developer mode. We've also put user data on the same uh, form. So let's close that and we'll close uh, uh, the shapes, we'll come to pages. Uh, if we open the pages once again, uh, go to our second page, what we'll pull up is the connections portion of the sh uh, page definitions. And this is where the dynamic connectors and their endpoints uh, get defined or, or documented within uh, the drawing. What, uh, what I've done is I've also put in a second list view and created a simple path report that shows the begin shape the connection shape, and finally, uh, the end shape. Uh, for those that want to understand what shapes are connected with each other and the path that they take uh, through the uh, document or through the page. So let's move on to our second form. Our second sample application is a simple uh, container list uh, diagram that shows how applications are connected with each other. If we come up to our, our tree once again, we'll see the standard uh, sections up in the front of uh, the tree. Uh, and, and we're down into the data connections and data record sets. In this case, it shows that we have four data record sets in this uh, drawing. For data record sets, we want to look at two sets of functions. ADO data, which is the data that was pulled in from external sources, uh, for instance, the attribution application data record set, uh, the provider that shows where the data came from, in this case, it was an access database. Uh, the two things that we don't see filled in are the file name and the command name. These aren't filled in because Visio didn't pull these uh, data record sets in. They were pulled in by way of VBA codes. So Visio doesn't know where to find them. For each of the data record sets, we, we've loaded a data grid with the information in the data record set. And we've also provided the XML schema to show how that information was defined. The second piece of data record sets that we have an interest in is data mapping. Data mapping has two portions to it. There's the column definitions that Visio uses, and then there's the row map that Visio uses. This row map is where we define for each row in a given record set what shapes are linked to it. So this is the data linking key to track back from where the external data comes to what shape and what uh, shape data fields. Our third sample diagram is a, a BPMN drawing that was uh, shared with me by Scott Helmers out of his uh, book, uh, Visio Step-by-Step Step 2010. We'll go back once again, we'll start with a tree and we'll see that in this case, we don't have connections or data record sets, but we do have a namespace V14, which says it's a 2010 drawing. Validation says uh, that it's, it came out of a premium edition and has the data validation and VPMN stuff. If we come up to document, once again, our template is a BPMN template and category is filled in here and it says validation errors were found. So let's move out of here to validation and look for issues. There were two issues discovered in this drawing the last time it was validated. Uh, the, uh, for each of the issues, we have the rule info, in other words, what rule uh, was fired and what shape fired the rule. Uh, in this case, it was page four, shape one. It is possible you may not have a shape ID here. It may be a generic error. So just be aware that shape IDs may appear to be invalid. 
So this was uh, rule set one, shape ID 19. And come back to validation, look at rule sets. There only is one rule set in this drawing. It is BPMN. And when we come down to rules, uh, we can look at rule 19 and, and get the name, category, description, and the other data. For those that are interested in drilling down and understanding how this is put together, I strongly recommend David Parker's book on uh, uh, process diagramming. So let's go over to our, our code and see how this was implemented. Our solution is implemented very easily. Uh, we, we have a XML schema area, which is for reference, that has the 2003, 2007, and 2010 schemas. I then ran an application against it called XSD, uh, which comes in the .NET Framework 2.0 Software Developers Kit. What it did was created template classes for me so that I could use them for reference to find out how the individual sections were put together. We don't call any of these classes in the application. The drawing section is our sample uh, drawings that we've just walked through, which drags us through to one uh, section, which is where our code is. Our form is our control panel, which we just looked at. Its function in life is just to give us a menu and three displays. Since the last form we looked at was issues, uh, let's look at uh, rules issues and see how it starts. Like almost all of the forms in this application, we, we call to get uh, we'll call a, a, a method to gather our initial information. It almost always starts with a single one-line link to XML query. This one line of code gathers all of our issue data out of the drawing. We then use uh, that query to walk through the attributes for it uh, and document what's been called. Uh, when we get down here to the end of uh, the building the list view, uh, we gather uh, the rule info we just talked about and the target info we just talked about. The format of those methods is the same as what we just looked at. We'll start off with a query, uh, a link query to XML to get the rule info. We'll build the list view control. In this case, when I'm building the list view control, I have some additional queries inside to get the detail information, such as the names of fields, and insert them in the list view as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's a very simple application. It runs quick. It runs clean. And if you come up to the top of this form, you'll notice that there are no uh, Visio uh, imports. This is done purely within .NET. Finally, some references for you. Uh, where to download the uh, schemas for Visio. They're up on uh, the Microsoft download site. MSDN has linked to XML samples, which are excellent. They, they come in both VB.NET and C Sharp examples. The three drawings that we uh, included, two of them come from Chris Roth's site, uh, the org chart example and the data record set. Uh, once again, I got the BPMN drawing from uh, uh, Scott Helmers and it came out of his book. Chris Roth has a book that just came out also, which is, which is a good intro for those uh, that, that haven't played with uh, Visio coding before. Chris Roth also has his presentation material from his 2006 uh, presentation at the Visio Developers Conference on XML. And finally, there's David Parker's book, uh, Diagramming or Business Processing, Diagramming and Validation, which is uh, something you ought to keep close if you're going to work on BPM diagrams. Once again, I hope this helps. This is Al Edlund.